welcome back to drum roll today i have with me a long established professional musician raised by a musician father he started doing jazz gigs as a teenager he entered the new south wales conservatorium of music in his mid-20s and he's been a freelance musician ever since then he's here to talk about an upcoming digital concert this weekend i'd like to welcome al davy hi hey nice to see you thank you so much for joining me today thank you for doing this for me you have been part of the very famous Unity Hall Jazz Band for a long time. Before we talk about the band, though, let's talk about the hall, the Unity Hall, because that is a legendary venue in Sydney for jazz music. Can you tell us a little bit about the hall? Well, the Unity Hall, uh, I think it was probably a hall before it was a pub. It was the birthplace of the Australian, Australian Labour Party, actually. Mm. Uh, the band... Back in the days when there was just jazz everywhere in the rocks and the cross, Balmain, everywhere, the boys started playing there about 48 years ago and they've been there ever since. They used to do quite a, uh, well, a few gigs a week. Now we're down to sort of one gig on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. One Sunday a month is Dan Barnett's big band, mm -hmm. but otherwise it's a Unity Hall band. At the moment, it's a stable rhythm section with Gary Walford, and Stan Velikos and Graham Hilgendorf uh, as a rhythm section. And we have a rotating front line of uh, some of the best horn players in Sydney, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, Dan Barnett and trombone, uh, George Washing Machine on violin, Brad Child, saxophone, Jeff Bull, trumpet. Great players. And, uh, Bob Henderson. Yeah, all great players. And whoever might come in from overseas uh, usually gets a bit of a spot. Ah, fantastic. And, uh, yeah. And it's a great venue for people that love that music. And there's always a lot of dancers there from dance clubs. Right, right. So there's it's two great. bars at the hall, isn't there? You've got the downstairs yeah. area. The, the band played downstairs for all those years. About three years ago, they put us upstairs. And I prefer upstairs. Yeah. I thought it might be the uh, death knell of the gig, but it's really uh, taken off. So it's good. Mm-hmm. So the audience there. there is pretty much a dedicated audience, whereas downstairs there was a lot of just uh, traffic coming in and out, as well as a dedicated audience. Right. But, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of regulars. Because we're situated in Balmain. It's, it's one of the older areas of Sydney, so there's lots of lovely old buildings there, and it's a lovely place to walk and shop and have your coffee or a glass of wine and that kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful old pub too. We're in the workers' bar, which is upstairs, mm -hmm. and we're there... Well, hopefully we'll be back there soon from three till six on Sundays. Fantastic. I love the, the fact that it's on such a sharp corner that you've got windows on both sides and it makes it a very unusual venue and that you've got light just pouring in from both directions, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a lovely venue to play at. Very beautiful. Now, I was reading in your bio that you started out playing gigs at an early age in Melbourne, uh, playing yep. jazz music. And, you know, other styles of music have sort of come and gone through the, the decades. What do you think is it that keeps jazz popular throughout this time? It's probably been almost 100 years now. Why is jazz still so popular? Well, jazz was the pop music until rock and roll came in mm. from uh, 1920s to probably... 40s, 50s? Uh, yeah, mid-50s. The origins of jazz and the origins of rock are very deep in the blues. Mm -hmm. 12 bar blues, you know, uh, Chuck Berry, Jerry Lee Lewis and all that. And in the early jazz days, it was a, rag, a lot of ragtime stuff and just lovely melodies, Stephen Foster melodies and stuff like that. But there's a lot of blues in jazz and um, people just love that. If it's a, a real good groove, yeah, you just tap your toes and want to I dance. I know. It's, it's, it's high vibe, isn't it? You know, it lift, lifts your vibe and makes you feel good. Yeah. And also, you know, uh, Louis Armstrong pretty much opened the door to improvisation. Back in his day, the level was there. It was pretty, very ensemble music and it was great. But Louis came along and his brilliance in improvising just blew the lid off. So that and, was uh, that fairly new at that stage? Because I get, I'm... A, I'm trying to picture what that was like, that you would have had the swing bands with the box in the front of each person with their, that was their music stand and stuff. Is you talking about from beyond that? Is that when the improvisation started happening? Yeah, I think in, in New Orleans, they didn't read as such. No. Uh, the early stuff, it was just uh, 
jazz bands that they just jammed together, wouldn't they? They just jammed together, yeah. Good fun. So yeah. you've got a concert coming up this Sunday, and yeah. uh, that is with how many people from the band this time around? Five. It's it's okay. normally a, a, a quintet. It's uh, the three rhythm section and two horns. Mm-hmm. So the horns this week, uh, me on trumpet and trombone, and Chris O'Day on saxophone. Mm-hmm. Chris is a young guy who's uh, ripping up the scene at the moment. He's a fantastic player. Awesome. That sounds great. So what can people expect when they tune in to listen to this concert? What sort of music can they expect? Well, we'll be playing our usual repertoire. We'll be doing some Louis Armstrong stuff and we're doing a few vocals. I sing a few vocals. Chris might sing a vocal. Uh, We do traditional jazz. We do big band riff stuff. It's going to get people up and dancing? Well, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, that, we can do it in our lounge think, this time, can't we? Yeah, we're in a small room, but uh, I think there's going to be a lot of people outside. So they'll be uh, listening. Ah. And, yeah. Okay, so it's That's not going to be from Unity Hall, is it? You're going to be working with... No, we're going to be in, in the house of another drummer that occasionally does a gig, Matt Morrison. He's got a little studio set up. Excellent. Okay, that yeah. sounds great. So it's going to be this Sunday, the 30th of August at 3 p.m. Sydney time. So I'm going to put below the video in the description area, I'll put in a few of the different time zones if you want to tune in, if you're from other places around the world. And it will be live streamed from Rumble Records and there will also be a a space where donations can be taken. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. This will be my first official engagement in five months. So Mm, really looking forward to it. Yes, I know. I bet you are. This COVID thing has been a... A real stick in the spokes, I think, for, for show business has been very annoying. So uh, definitely, if you can help support these musicians by making a donation, I've already checked on the button. You'll find it's uh, under the name of the bass player, Stanley Valacos, when you go in there. So don't expect yep. to say Unity Jazz Band or anything. But it's open-ended. You can put in whatever you want to put in there, $5, $50, $1,000, dollars whatever you can donate to support these musicians who have been out of work for a while now with the COVID event holding things up. So it would be very, very helpful if you can keep these guys blowing <laughs> and eating <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> and paying and paying their mortgages and rents. That would be very, very helpful. So thank you so much for joining me today, Al. We look forward to the concert on Sunday. Thank you, Annabelle. Yeah, really appreciate it.